So in yesterday session, we understood that GTS is a standalone system. And in order to use foreign trade process in SAP GTS, we need to send data from different systems. So different systems means as of now, we are sending data, let's say from ECC, and we are also sending data from S4. So most of the cases, our ECC system and S4 system would be our feeder system because we are feeding data from these two systems to SAP GTS system. So how can we send data? Because these are two different systems, we need to have an RFC connection between both the systems. If we are done with this RFC connection, then only we can send data from let's say ECC to GTS. And similarly, if we are done with the RFC connection in GTS to ECC, we can receive result from GTS to ECC back. So it is. It means that communication is this a two-way communication between both the systems. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Now here, generally, one question which comes in everyone's mind. Let's say today our client is using ECC system, and from ECC we are sending data to GTS. Let's say what if tomorrow client uh, client system will be migrated into S4. So what changes we need to we need, we need to complete we need to do from the system communication point of view, from the RFC connection point of view. So please remember no changes. Even whether it, uh, whether our feeder system is on ECC or S4, we will have the similar kind of connection. Five steps in our feeder system side and six steps in our GTA system side. So there is no any a change if we migrate from ECC to S4. So now RFC connection is done. RFC connection is done between these two systems. Let's say ECC to GTS or S4 to GTS. Now from, from now onwards, we will not use the term ECC or S4. Rather than we will be using feeder system. <clears throat> so feeder system can be ECC or can be S4. Always we, we will be using the term as feeder system. Now the question is, what data we need to send right that is okay so we have we have done the communication part so what data we need to send again if you all remember we are sending our logistics data which are logistics data from the sales side sale that is nothing but export side correct from the sales side we need to send sales document we need to send an outbound delivery obd and we are sending billing document from the sales side. Similarly, from the purchasing side, we can say purchasing or an import. From the import point of view, we are sending purchasing documents, purchase orders, inbound deliveries, IBD, and we need to send material documents. Let's say GR, my go, material document. So these are the six transactional data which we are sending to SAP GTS system. So why we need to send them then uh, because let's say if a customer has placed an order we are located in country x customer is located in country y when a customer places an order from country y first we need to make sure we are compliant how can we be compliant we can be compliant by following rules and regulations. which rules and regulation number one the country the customer country should not be blocked country that is that means the customer country should not be an embargoed country, number one. Number two is the customer itself should not be on denied party list. That means customer should be a good member. And number three, we need to have a valid license to export our product to so-and-so customer. So how can we make sure? So when a customer is placing an order, first we are creating a sales order. How can we make sure these three things? So for that only we are sending uh, this sales order. Let's see here we have created sales order. We are sending this sales order to SAP GTS system. One thing we know that whenever the sales document gets a transfer to GTS system, GTS system creates one mirror document, one replicated document. And that replicated document is called as a customs document, right? So it doesn't mean that sales order uh, RFC connection is done create sales document and this sales document will be created in gts directly custom document will be created it, it's not like that we need to we need to have some configuration 
what settings are required that we'll discuss. But at high level, whenever we are, let's say all customization is done. <clears throat> so when we create a sales document here, with the help of remote function call, sales order will be transferred to GTS and GTS will be able to create one mirror document, one replicated document. That replicated document is called as a customs document. In, we are creating sales order with, with the sale with customer and material, correct? Since custom document will be created with reference to sales order, I mean, yeah, with the sales order, same sales order data needs to be, you know, replicated in GTS. Which data? Again, same thing, customer and material. One thing we, we understood in other, uh, again, our introduction session that when we are transferring customer master data to SAP GTS, it, is, it will be created as a business partner master data, BP. If we are transferring a vendor master data, this vendor master data will also be created as a business partner master data. Correct? So if customer and vendor, so it means that uh, when, when this master data can be available, it means before creating the sales order, we need to, uh, we must transfer this master data. Which master data? Customer, vendor, and material. Customer and material is sufficient for sales document. Vendor plus material is sufficient for purchasing document, right? So before transferring our sales document, that is transaction data, first we need to transfer master data. So which master data we need to transfer? In general, we are transferring these, these three master data. Customer, which, which will be created as a business partner master data. Vendor, which will be created as a, again, business partner master data. And material will be created as a customs product, right? So it means we need to make sure before we transfer any sales document, our required master data should be available in GTS system. So now let's understand how to transfer master data. So this is the first topic. How to transfer master data. Now, before going into configuration, let's understand the process. Uh, I hope Sharad, you and Bobby, you both are from uh, SAP background, ECC background, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. All right. Okay, Bobby. So what happens? Well, let's say once everything is done, configuration is done, uh, then testing is done in, I mean, unit test, SIT test, integration test, everything is completed. Now it, our go live date is very near. So what we are doing, we need to perform cutover activities, right? We need to perform cutover activities. Now as part of cutover activities, business will give us list of all the, all the master data. They will give the list of all the customers, vendors and materials. And they will ask us to push to SAP GTS system. See what, what settings are needed, we'll discuss, but let's discuss both the things parallelly. Let's say everything is completed, configuration is done, everything is completed. Now we need to perform cutover activities. So in the production system, they will ask us to transfer all these master data from production ECC to production GTS. So, so what will happen? They will, they will share the Excel sheet. In the Excel sheet, all customers will be there. Let's say, let's say we have 10 million customer master data. We have, let's say, some 1 million vendor master data and some 10,000 is the material master data or what are numbers, but they will, uh, they will give the list of these master data and they will ask us to push to GTS system. So this is called as an initial transfer, right? This, this particular process is called as an initial transfer. It means very first time, whenever we are transferring huge number of master data, that is called as the initial master data. 